Today, we want to review Pennsylvania's policy and Pennsylvania's program aimed at both preventing juvenile delinquency and also as developing effective alternatives to detention for the juvenile offenders. And it is also important for us to realize that we have to learn about what strategies are really working that are effective in terms of cost and treatment. So to ensure that juveniles get the appropriate help they need to become productive, healthy, law-abiding citizens. That's the purpose of this meeting today. And, uh, you know, this committee uh, may very well be aware of the fact that there are huge numbers of professions and jobs that essentially are not available to kids who carry an adjudication record with them. A uh, young man who wants to go into the service, a young man who is in college and pursuing a degree as a teacher and with an adjudication of delinquency uh, can't get a certificate to teach. The research shows that every time you put handcuffs on a kid, you are increasing the risk that they will not graduate from high school. And that therefore, in doing so, we must be careful about what kids we put handcuffs on and, and haul them off and put them into a police car. Um, that uh, we want to take a look at these referrals from the schools knowing that about 91% of them were things that I did as a kid. I mean, think about it, ladies and gentlemen. Who would ever think? Who would ever think that keeping kids in school will actually increase graduation rates? <laughs> Gee. But anyway, the research any is backing up what I think is a matter of common sense anyway. Um, Septa Police Department has been involved with this program basically since its inception. As my colleagues just discussed, disparate treatment of minority youth by police officers during arrests have a dramatic impact on the rates at which youth of color are sent to juvenile placement facilities. In Pennsylvania, many of the detention centers here and residential facilities are privately owned and many are for-profit. Their per diem rates, as we heard earlier, is two, are $200 a day and higher, and yet most of these facilities around the country have recidivism rates as high as 50 to 70 percent. Imagine a business where you charge $200, $300 a day and your success rate is 30 percent, 40 percent. The second thing that we noticed when we looked at our detention center population the majority of kids that we, that we saw that were in detention, again, in late 2005, early 2006, were not there because they had committed an act of delinquency. The majority of those kids were actually there because they had previously committed an act of delinquency. They were now on probation, and they had violated the terms of, of their probation. So, again, the majority of kids that we saw that were in lockup uh, were not there because they posed a threat to the community. They were there because they just were not fulfilling the basic requirements of their probation. Our 2009-2010 um, average per diem at our Schaffner Juvenile Detention Center uh, is $566 a day. So every juvenile we place in secure detention costs the taxpayers $566 per day for the first nine months of this fiscal year. And the other thing is, under, under the thou shalt nots, perhaps I would, I would really implore you not to implement laws that require mandatory reporting of kids that commit, uh, let's say, a minor assault in a school at the age of 10. Uh, don't do that, please, and, and, and don't implement the kind of draconian uh, laws that, that some people espouse as being the answer to the problem when in reality they exacerbate the problem. I think we have moved past the point where we need to consider such things as zero tolerance policies, mandatory, mandatory reporting policies. Uh, those policies, frankly, don't work, uh, but the evidence-based policies do. It is imperative that we get it right for those who come in contact with the system early in life when we can most effectively prevent them from becoming lifetime offenders that will cost the state hundreds of thousands of dollars to detain. We can now state unequivocally that there are certain programs, certain mechanisms that when done properly 
clearly reduce and prevent problems that have vexed us for generations. Child abuse, drug abuse, delinquency, violence, and school dropout. In Pennsylvania, detention centers and residential facilities are privately owned for the most part, and we are spending about $200 per day where the recidivism rate is about 50 to 75 percent. The app services are $65 a day. Our recidivism rate is 20 percent or less. Instead of viewing students as the problem, we see them as the primary resource in a school youth court. The Chester Youth Court motto is students helping students make better decisions. And I think that's what we want from all of our kids. I stayed in trouble most of my life. Uh, getting suspended all the time, getting suspensions was really normal to me. That's uh, the mentality I had in my head. I didn't care about anything or anybody. I was not a social person. I also had a temper problem that got, in, that got me into trouble. I found out about Youth Court from a school resource officer by the name of Timothy Jones. At first, I did not want to join Youth Court, but my attitude changed once I was introduced to the goals of Youth Court. I got set in with my advocate, and she basically um, made me realize it was time to grow up. I wouldn't be here before you today if I wasn't given a second chance. Um, me being put in a juvenile detention center would give me the same mentality that I had before I joined Youth Court. And youth redemption means that we believe that the kids who come into our system have strengths, are capable of change, can earn redemption, and that they can become responsible and productive members of their communities. 